Today on the newscast, a day of high political drama in Israel. Plus, Iran's largest warship just sank as the shadow war at sea continues. Get all the breaking details coming up. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. Well, today is the day in Israel. Midnight tonight, Israel time. That would be 3 p.m. East Coast time here in the United States. That is the deadline for this so-called change coalition to form a new government that would see Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel's longest serving prime minister, ousted from power. Now, we've got a top Israeli political analyst joining us from Jerusalem in just a minute to break down all the latest developments in the upside down Israeli political situation. But before we get into it, a quick update for you, a major piece of news early this morning out of Iran, Iran's largest warship, it's called the Karg, or it was called the Karg, caught fire and sunk in the Gulf of Oman. That's right. This happened uh, near the Iranian port of Jask, which is about 750 miles southeast of the Iranian capital of Tehran. An unexplained fire aboard this large warship, again, Iran's biggest, and the ship actually sank. Now, mysterious circumstances, obviously, Iran has not shared what exactly happened other than there was a fire and now the ship is gone. But remember, folks, this comes against the backdrop of this ongoing shadow war at sea that we've been reporting on here over the past few months on the Watchman newscast between Iran and Israel attacking one another's shipping. And this may be the latest blow in that shadow war. And I have to say, Iran is getting the worst end of this battle at sea for sure. Think about that Iranian mothership in the Red Sea that also suffered an explosion a few months back, including many Iranian ships traveling to Syria that Israel has reportedly also struck. Could this be this large, the largest Iranian warship at the bottom of the ocean now? Could this also be a victim of this shadow war. We will have much more on this tomorrow. That is Thursday, June 3rd on a Watchman Newscast live event. That's right. We're doing another live stream from 4 p.m. Eastern time to 5 p.m. Eastern time. That's in the States, East Coast time from 4 to 5, one solid hour, a, a Middle East roundup, all the latest breaking updates on the Israeli political situation, on this shadow war at sea that may have just taken a major escalation and much more. Also, some personal stories I always like to blend in on our live streams. So bring your questions and be sure to join us tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're in Israel, that's 11 p.m. You're seven hours ahead. If you're in Great Britain, you are five hours ahead. You get the idea. 4 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow, Thursday, June 3rd. Join us right here live on the Watchman YouTube channel. While you're at it, be sure to subscribe. If you have not yet, subscribe and click that notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. Folks, we are posting every day practically now as the world and certainly the Middle East are on fire. And for such a time as this, we are bringing you daily updates right here on the Watchman Newscast. Okay. Let's get into our big interview today with a top Israeli political analyst, my good friend Alex Trayman. He is the Jerusalem Bureau Chief for the Jewish News Syndicate, that's JNS. Their website is jns.org. Folks, they are doing great work. I strongly encourage you to check out jns.org. Here is my interview with, from Jerusalem, Jerusalem Bureau Chief Alex Trayman of JNS, the Jewish News Syndicate, breaking down all the latest details in the Israeli political situation, and who exactly are Naftali Bennett and Yair Lapid, the two men who may replace Benjamin Netanyahu? Take a look. And we are joined now by the Jerusalem Bureau Chief of JNS, Alex Trayman. Always great to have you, my friend. And what a momentous time in Israel right now. We've got a few hours left as I'm coming to you early morning here on the east coast of the United States, about three o'clock in the afternoon in Israel. This so-called change coalition uh, has just a few hours left to put a government together. What's your take right now as you're looking at the landscape? Could these be the last days of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu? Well, on the one hand, Benjamin Netanyahu is definitely uh, 
barely one step away from the end of a 12 year consecutive tenure as the prime minister of the state of Israel. On the other hand, the bloc that's been committed to removing him for this past extended period has been trying hard over the last several weeks to negotiate an alternative government that would put Naftali Bennett as the prime minister for the first two years before turning over in a rotation to Yir Lapid, who is the chairman of the opposition uh, on the left side of the Israeli political spectrum. They have been negotiating hard now for weeks. They would also need the support of one of the Israeli Arab parties, uh, the Ram party, and it would be the first time in Israeli history that any Israeli Arab party would join any Israeli government, whether that was led by the right or the left. And uh, right now, it seems that in this these last final hours in which Lapid holds the mandate to form a government, uh, that there are some still significant gaps uh, between Israel's left wing and the Ram party. Um, and then also there are some gaps between Naftali Bennett's own Yamina party uh, and the left wing labor party over who gets to control the judicial appointments that will be made during the upcoming coalition. So still gaps. And the fact that they haven't yet announced that they do have a government is an indication that they don't have a government. And that might kick the entire process over to the Knesset for a 21 day period, uh, which just means that the, the circus of trying to find an Israeli government will continue uh, for the near future. Yeah, I want to ask you more about that far-flung coalition, Alex, like you mentioned, right-wing, left-wing, centrist, and Islamist party, uh, all part of this coalition. But real quick, a lot of people watching may say, all I know is Benjamin Netanyahu. He's been prime minister for the last 12 years, 15 years overall. Uh, tell us real quick about Naftali Bennett, who is on the right, and Yair Lapid, who is on the left, who may do this rotating premiership. Right, so Naftali Bennett... Uh, is the head of the small right-wing Yamina party. It's a religious Zionist party, uh, claims to be uh, even to the right of Netanyahu, but not dramatically to the right of Netanyahu, claims to be a, a pragmatic uh, right-winger, obviously willing to sit now with the left wing um, because they're offering him the, the chair of the prime ministership, which is an unbelievable circumstance because Yamina only has seven seats out of 120. So you have somebody that has 5% of the votes uh, in the parliament who now would be the prime minister. And that's a unheard of precedent really in any democracy anywhere, let alone in Israel, that someone with such a small uh, voting following would become the prime minister uh, in a democracy. And yet Yair Lapid, on the other hand, uh, from really the chairman, not just the chairman of the opposition, but the head of the left in Israel today. And yet it wouldn't be the first time that Lapid and Bennett have aligned together. In 2013, Benjamin Netanyahu tried to form a right-wing government uh, together with Naftali Bennett, the first time that Bennett had entered into the Knesset as the head of the his party. And Bennett demanded that Netanyahu negotiate also with Lapid to bring him into a centrist unity government, uh, which was a tremendous lost opportunity. And in fact, that government uh, really didn't last very long, uh, which it only lasted about two years, which also gives you an indication that if Bennett and Lapid form a government, specifically if they have support from, from the Islamist party, Ram on the side that it, it very much represents an unstable alliance. You know, the, the commonality between all of these parties, or at least most of the parties, is, is their desire to unseat Netanyahu, who has been holding the seat of power in Israel now for 12 straight years and has been the prime minister for 15 years overall. And the feeling is that if they can just get Netanyahu out, then they can realign and shuffle the deck again afterwards. And that's the reason why Lapid on the left is willing to actually promote a right winger to be the immediate prime minister as a successor to Netanyahu, because they feel like first things first, let's just get Netanyahu out of the way and we'll deal with Bennett later. And yet at the same time, Bennett, who has such a small percentage of the of the voting public, who's also really gone against the will of his own voters who do not want him to join a government with the left. I mean, this is a, a someone who ran 
toward a right wing voter base, you know, has right wing ideologies. There was definitely an opportunity to form a right wing government together with Benjamin Netanyahu, who was a right winger, and Bennett seizing the opportunity uh, to become the prime minister uh, is running to the left because he certainly wouldn't get that opportunity from Netanyahu on the right. Very interesting. Last question, Benjamin Netanyahu, Alex, is there uh, any scenario? Well, I guess there are some scenarios that he could come out of this a few months from now and he is still Israel's prime minister. Uh, if he does not, uh, you've talked about security issues a lot over the years, obviously. Um, what do Israel's enemies think of all of this? They see this instability, four elections in two years. Uh, what message is Israel's enemies taking from this? Well, there's two questions there. I, there definitely are scenarios in which Netanyahu remains the prime minister until he's out. He's still in. And, and believe me, his team is working hard to foil any kind of alternative alliance. Uh, the fact that they haven't created that government yet uh, just demonstrates even more that he's still in the game. So don't rule him out until he's out. And then with regard to the message that's being sent, I think you can just look back two weeks to see Hamas uh, all of a sudden try to attack Israel because we are in a period of a transitional government and a period in which the left is actually trying to form a government. And clearly Netanyahu was a strong horse. Netanyahu has been a fierce defender of Israeli security interests. People understand that he will even stand up to the United States if need be to protect Israel's security interests. And I think that if you have an inexperienced tandem of Bennett and Lapid running the government, they're not going to be able to stand up to the type of diplomatic pressure that they will receive both from Europe, from the international bodies like the United Nations and from the United States. And at the same time, the United States is actually funding Gaza now, funding the Palestinian Authority, funding Iran if they go back into the Iran nuclear deal. So the incentives for malign actors in the region to start acting up uh, are only going up. They're only getting more likely. And uh, again, I, you have an inexperienced tandem here and uh, it, it would, we would be, we would be in a difficult situation in these next few years, even with Netanyahu at the helm and even in a much trickier situation if they replace Netanyahu. Yeah. This whole movement, it almost reminds me of the never Trump movement, anyone but Trump that we had here in the United States with, with, with what is going on with prime minister Netanyahu now. Alex Trayman, as always, my friend, Jerusalem Bureau Chief for the great JNS folks. Check it out, JNS.org. I will see you soon in Jerusalem, my friend. Thanks again, Alex. Thanks for Thank keeping an eye so on Thank you so much, us. Eric. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks again to our good friend, Alex Trayman of the Jewish News Syndicate. That's JNS.org. Folks, check them out. They are doing great work. And a quick reminder, once again, tomorrow, that's Thursday, June 3rd, a Watchman newscast live stream right here on YouTube from 4 p.m. Eastern Time to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, a solid hour. Be sure to bring your questions because we will have a Q&A during this live stream and we are keeping a very close eye on everything happening in Israel right now with the political situation. Hopefully on the live stream tomorrow, we will have an answer on what the future holds for Israel, at least in a political sense. We know where things are going spiritually. We'll talk about that tomorrow as well. Thanks so much for joining us here today on the Watchman Newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.